So, are we ready? Yes. Any questions? Did I miss anything, ladies? Any questions? Oh, yes, yes. Do you remember, you all remember Susan, my sister-in-law? Yes, 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 yes. And we prayed for a house. Yes. Yes. It seems like the Lord has provided a house now, and, and she misses, she wants to be here for the Lord. Yes. So sends her love, and she cried to me to tell me, I need to go and go there. But today we received a notice that there's a home that we might be able to buy, and if we do, she's going to go over here. Oh. Heavenly Father, we come to you once again, Lord. We are here, Father. We are here sit sitting at your feet, ready to hear from the Holy Spirit what you have for us tonight. You're preparing us for the world we live in today. You are opening our eyes and you are giving, giving us new revelation. Lord, let our hearts be prepared to receive. Yes. Father, we have been living a life that really is not the type of life that you want us to live. But we are here, and every time we come, we get strengthened, and our eyes get open wider and clearer, and we understand much better, and we're applying, and we feel strength because we have joy. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. And everyone sees it, Father. Everyone says there's so much joy. There's so much joy. That's your strength in us, Lord. That's your strength in us, Lord. So, Holy Spirit, this is our time with you. You are the true teacher. You teach us. You show us. Lead us and guide us. Speak to our souls, to the innermost of the being of who we are. We have been wonderfully made by you. Yes. Let our ears hear your voice clearly. Yes. Give us understanding, impeccable understanding. Give us more insight of the true nature of who you are and who we are in you. Father God, we are here. Visit us, be with us. But Holy Spirit, you speak, you teach. Remove me from anything you have to say, Lord. Remove me completely. Don't let them hear anything that is not of you. Remove me, remove the flesh, but Father, use me as an instrument. I surrender my voice. I surrender everything to you at your pleasing. Use me as you see fit. And if there's anything that, that these beautiful ladies are going through, we surrender it to you, Lord. May we rest in you, Father God. Each one of us have a life, a separate life. When we go home and we go and close the door behind us, Father, may your Holy Spirit dwell within the walls, in our homes. May we feel your presence there as you dwell in us, as you dwell in us, in us more and more and more and more. And we're going from glory to glory to glory. That everywhere we go, we will sense your presence. Oh, Holy Spirit, have your way in our hearts. Every heart in here, every soul in this room tonight is ready to hear from you. Speak to them directly into their soul, into their being, into who they are. You have a word for each one of us. Let us understand. True understand. You're the light of the world. And we are the lights in the world, reflecting your glory in a dark world. So here we are, ready, ready. Holy Spirit, the stage is yours. Teach us. 
In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say, Amen. 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 We are ready. <clears throat> okay, we are going to start with week two. Am I correct? Yes. yes. So how many of us did homework? No, that's all right. We do it together. And that's the beauty about this, that we don't have to do that homework because we can do it together. So, amen. Here we go. Snip and snail. Uh, that is 42. Where's my work? Where are my notes? Right here. Okay, I'm going to ask a question. Is there any extra books? No, yeah. Oh, by the way, who needs a book? Because we're going to order some more. We ordered 25, right? We ordered 25 books. We ordered five more. And we ordered five more. That's 30, but we don't have that many here because some of them got the book, but, but they didn't come back. Um, uh, because, like, like, your sister had to go home, which she took a book and. and um, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and the reason she did that was because we know she was coming. So, yes. And, and actually, you know what? To catch up for you that are starting right now, go to the website. Uh, there's a, I'm going to give you the website and you can go ahead and go there. I'll give it to you in a little bit. Uh, go to the website and you will see all our teachings there. Okay? So, uh, and then the True Woman, uh, True Woman 101 is also on YouTube. You could also go there and see the panel as they speak. But it, when you do go there and go to the panel, you're not going to hear what we teach here because, of course, there's more input in a class than there is in a panel. So let me, I just heard this and let me turn it off so that I won't, I won't uh, be bothered. Okay, now, we are learning a Father's God, a, fa a Father's God profound mystery in his creation, male and female. I'm going to do a little review. We have learned male and female were created for what? Okay. So what I'm going to do is the first one that says it is the one that kind of scares me. I only have two. <laughs> you guys are too smart. I only have two. They're calendars. They're, they're calendars with our picture on it. <laughs> I, I should know better than to get too close to you. So, okay. Okay, to display God's glory. Remember that we taught that, <clears throat> remember how I told you that in a, in a movie, when you get a trailer, you see what's going to happen in the movie? Mm -hmm. Well, we, female and males, are trailers of God's character and nature. And, and everything that he is was built in us. And we, when a male and female come together, we display his character. Now, if you're saying, well, I'm not married, I'm single. Still, you were made in his image. And we also have learned that we women like to be validated. We women want to feel needed. And I'm going to tell you something. No one, no one puts more value in us than our Father. No one. No one. We were created in the image of God, female and male. Not just male, but female and male were created in His image. Okay, which is when he gave authority, he gave when he gave the instruction authority, he gave it to Adam. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna study a little bit today about men, but for now, I'm just gonna do a little review. Female and males were created in his image. So, with that said, is it says that his our worth. We're always saying, well, you know, you pick man first. So you favor men. And no, he made male and female. Our worth is the same to him. We are very valuable because out of all his creation, all of his creation, 
everything that he created, and there's gobs and gobs of different kinds of animals and insects, different kinds of trees. Remember that I, we talked about the conifers trees. Yeah. Remember how the forest, if you go up uh, aer an aerial view, the forest looks beautiful with these different kinds of trees. They're all evergreens, but each one has its own purpose. Each tree, a pine tree, a Douglas tree, they smell different. They have a different scent. We are like that. We are all different, all of us, male and females, every one of us is different, but we all carry a scent. We are all, we all have different scents. Another way to put it is we are a garden, and each one of us is a flower to him. And each one of us has a different scent and a different purpose. You cannot take care of a cactus and take care of, of a rose the same way. They need different kind of care, right? But well, we're all different. We're all different. But it doesn't mean that we're not that one is worth more than the other. We are equal in His eyes. He loves us all the same, male and female. Amen. Amen. So we know that our worth, we our value. My goodness, is the Creator of all, the Creator of everything, the stars, the moon, of everything made us in his liking. And we're the only ones that are in his liking. The only ones. No dogs, no cats, no birds, no trees, not. We are the only ones in his likings. We are the only ones that have the ability to make choices. We are the only ones that have the ability to understand the way we understand. We are the only ones because he, we are the only ones created in his image. How can you not say, I don't have any worth? If he loved you so much that he created you the way he did in his image. In his image. And what is his image? Who would remember? A man, what is the man's? Traits. Who can tell me that? And what can you tell me that? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay, Cindy, raise your hand first. Tell me what a man. No, I forgot. Love, strength, and sacrifice. Self, sacrifice. Self, sacrifice. Love, strength, and self, sacrifice. Love, strength and self-sacrifice. Um, what is God? <laughs> what is God? God is love. God is love. And Father God says to the man, love your wives as Christ loved the church. He did not say to the woman, woman, love your husband. He did not say that. He said to the woman, woman, submit yourself to your husband. When your husband loves you, look at his traits, strength, love, and self-sacrifice. And self, and, 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 and self self-sacrifice, self like he's provision, he's the provider. He has the strength, he provides, and he's self-sacrifice. Self all that is all that is God's character. It's God's character. Father God is love and He loves us. He is the provider. He provides for us. What does He say? If a sparrow should fall, how much more will He take care of us? He takes care of the lily, He takes care of the grass. How much more is He going to take care of us? Okay, so He has that. That's part of His character. He provides for us. He has love. And um, what's the other one? He provides self-sacrifice. What other self-sacrifice can there be than him dying on the cross? Mm -hmm. That's the greatest sacrifice there is, the greatest. How can we say that we're not loved? Ladies, we cannot say we're not loved because we are tremendously loved. We are loved beyond love. But it's our choice to believe it. We are in our faith Right now, the strength of your faith is where you want to be. Because it's your choice. My choice. 
to believe what he says. When we believe what he says, we become stronger. If we say, well, okay, you're talking about a husband and a wife, oh, I, I, I'm single. Yes, you are single, but you're still made in his image, and he loves you just the same. And since you don't have a husband, well, I don't have a husband to provide. I don't have a husband that loves me. I don't have a husband, uh, his strength. But wait a minute, yes, you do. Because the groom is coming for his bride. You do have a husband. Do you know that in Bible days when uh, you got engaged, what we call engaged nowadays, you're considered already married? Mm -hmm. When you're betrothed, you're already considered married? Well, we're considered married to the groom, and he's coming for his bride. So who is your provider, man? If you're single, no, he is. Yes. Who do you submit to, man? No, you <coughs> submit to him. He is male gender, okay? So, single or not single, the uh, uh, same thing goes with a, with, a, with a male. If he doesn't have his bride to love, he will love the father. If he doesn't have the bride to provide for, still he has the father. And, and I love uh, Pastor Charlie's sermon uh, Sunday when he said, if you don't have a husband, then you pray for the Lord to bring you your rib. I love what he said. It was so awesome. Because we were taking from the rib of man, right? And the man is missing his sight. So he told all the men, if you're not, if you're not married, pray that God will bring you your rib. <laughs> and to the women, if you don't have a husband, Pray that God will bring you the one that the rib belongs to. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> you're praying my sermon. You're praying my teaching. You're, you're teaching my teaching. So, male and female are loved. Male and female are equal in God's eyes, right? Okay, here comes a question. Okay. Uh, in what ways are we equal to men? In what way are we equal to men? No sin. In what way are we equal to men? We've been teaching. In what way? You got it. You got it. In validation, in worth, and Father's love. We are equal to men in validation because he loves us the same. He, he validates us the same. We are equal to men in worth because we're very important to him, male and female. He doesn't think that men is more important than, than the male, than the female. And he doesn't think that the female is more important than the male. He, both of us are important because he needs both of us. Um, so you got it right. So there you go. You got the calendar. Yay. Yay. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, what, what is Father's order for mankind? Father God is the head of Christ, one God. Christ is the head of the church, one body. And the husband is the head of the wife, one flesh. Ladies, we don't have to cringe anymore when we hear that man is the head of the wife. Man, man was made first and given the authority. Slide two. Man was made to reflect the strength, provision, and self-sacrifice. Woman was made to reflect responsiveness, grace, and beauty. You put those together and you have, you put those together and you have the relationship between father and son. And marriage is a covenant, but that goes deeper. But right now, you have the, the, the way the relationship that father and son have is one. Husband and us are one. Now, <clears throat> so what happened? Why is man more and more reflecting? Right now, it's reversed. 
men are more and more reflecting responsiveness, grace, and beauty. Men are more and more are reflecting our traits. They want, they're very responsive. Ah, they're very, and then they want the grace of the woman. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the beauty of a woman. Yeah. Men pluck their eyebrows, mm -hmm. men put makeup, men put earrings, men wear bracelets, they color their nails, mm -hmm. they shave their legs, they do everything that a woman does. The picture is it's reverting. Mm -hmm. Now, now, more and more, the woman is reflecting strength. I can do anything a man can. Provision, I can bake the bacon, and I can come home and cook it up in a pan. Right? Mm -hmm. And self-sacrifice. I can go out and work, and work, and work, and honey, you can stay home and take care of the kids. The roles are reverted and reverting. Satan is up to his old tricks. I want you to turn to Genesis. I'm going to read this because I want to tell you something that I saw and I have to get to it and I have to let you know. Okay. Are we all there? Genesis chapter 2. <coughs> chapter 2. <coughs> Verse 1. We're going to read verse 1 and 9. Are we there? Yes. Genesis chapter 2, 1 through 9. It's the account of how heaven was made and how we were made. Got it? Two, chapter 2, verse 1 through 9. And I'm going to read it in the New King, James, New King James Version. Thus the heaven and the earth and all the host of them were finished. That's when he finished doing the seventh all creation. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day of all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Now, this is a verse that I want you to keep, keep close attention to. This is the history of heaven and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord, capital, all capitals, who's that? Father God. God. Made, made the earth and the heavens before, it, before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown, the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground. You had just made the earth. There was no man yet. But a mist, pay attention, a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Okay? A mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Keep that in mind. And the Lord God formed of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. So when you see that in, in, and you're, you're reading that and you see that the mist came up from the ground and it watered the whole ground. So if you put water on the ground, what do you have? Mud. Mud. We are made of clay. Mm -hmm. So Father God made the water, the word earth was already there. He made and he formed Adam out of mud, out of clay. He formed Adam. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put man who he had formed. So he formed Adam and then he made he had made a garden and he took Adam and he went and he put him in the garden. Okay? We're gonna have, we're gonna, when you start reading the book, keep that in mind. 
Now out of the ground the Lord God made every tree to grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And uh, I think I missed the, I missed, the, I missed, the, I missed the verse uh, 7. And the Lord formed man out of the dust and ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put man whom he had formed. Okay, now, he, when he formed them, he said, I want you to what? He told them, I want you, I'm going to put you here and I want you to do what? Huh? Yeah. Okay. I want to tell you two words. Go ahead. Next. Tend is a verb. And it says, to apply, to tend to your affairs, to take care of, to manage the operations of to tend. The next one, keep, fulfill, to observe, to keep a promise, to guard, keep us from harm, also to take care of, to maintain, to preserve a record in, like keeping a diary. So Adam had to do, go back to the first one, ma'am. So Adam had to tend, which means that he had to take care of the garden. And he had to take care of us. We won't we were made yet, but that's what it's gonna to go to. And then he not only had to take care of us and meet our needs, the next one he had to do, next one he had, he also had to protect us and keep us from harm. He had to protect Eve and keep Eve from harm. He had to provide for Eve and tend to her, tend to her needs, and take care of her. That's what man has to do. Still to today, that's what man's obligation is. To take care of the woman. And, and, and also to protect her from harm. To protect her. Remember his strength? Why do you think he was giving strength? To protect. Remember provision? Why do you think he was giving provision? To provide her for her needs. Love? Why do you think he was giving love? Because he has to love his wife. Right? Right. Okay. Now, I want you to go to Genesis chapter 2. Now go to verse 15. Now I'm going to read 15. I'm going to read 15 through 17. It's right there, verse chapter 2. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Now you know what that means, right? Mm -hmm. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree... Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. So, I think that was a very important, a very important instruction from God. Yeah. Because if you eat of that tree, you're going to what? Die. Yeah, so, Adam was, had the responsibility of making sure that Eve never touched that. That Eve never eight of it. He had to protect Eve. In Genesis 2, 18 through 25, and the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. So he was looking at, it's not good for this guy to be alone. I will make him a helper, a helper comparable to him. How did he make Eve comparable to him? He took him from the rib, from his rib. So each one of us have a mate that is comparable to us. If we would wait, young ladies, you wait. You wait. You wait. You wait for the right person. You go to God and you ask him, Father, I want you to send me to the one that I belong to. I want you to send me because you're a part of somebody's rib and you need to pray and ask God when the time is, another 30 years, ask him, <laughs> ask him, <laughs> pray that Grandma Baloney, that's the only thing she agreed, pray <laughs> and ask, ask him, take me to whom I belong. 
You will know who he is because he would be in love with Jesus. Do not stray from that. Because if you see a lot of us, ladies, that you see that we're old now and married, we went through a lot of problems and pain because we did not do what I am asking you to do. We didn't know any better. Most of us, I didn't know. I wasn't born a Christian. I wasn't taught. I married my husband, and boy, if I would have not said, well, I don't think we're comparable at all. But you know, but he takes well, our mistakes and he turns them around and uses it for his good. Yes. Because he honors marriage. He honors marriage. You want to say something? Yes, um, it, it does. It is true. He will tell me because uh, we, I waited and I prayed. And the Lord told me, this is a man that I did for you. Life saved it. And that was 70, 50 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, 11 years old. I went to go visit my sister in Bakersfield, and and uh, my brother-in-law Raymond had a brother, and he was 17 at the time. And he introduced us, and when I shook his hand, he said, "This is going to be your husband." Mm -hmm. I got out. I ran to play. I was a little girl. I went out to play, mm -hmm. and he is my husband. Mm -hmm. So he will send you to who, mm -hmm. even though you even though you think like. You made a mistake. He doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't. So, ladies, yes, September. I just um, wanted to go back to the term that you used, helper. Uh huh. I, uh -huh. I was listening to a sermon, and um, I can't remember who it was. Unfortunately, it's on the radio. But he said that that term, that the Hebrew original language, actually means completer. Which is completely in line with right, right, because we because we complete we we are our husband's helper, and we complete him. Yes. Remember when I made the heart and I cut it and I said you need to get it becomes one. That's that's what it is. It complete and also the the Holy Spirit is our helper. Without him, we have nothing. He completes us and makes us whole. He is a teacher. He is also, also, it also means um, uh, standby. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the word helper is also standby. And he's always standing by, ready for us to just ask. And he'll help us. Yes. I asked the Lord for a husband that didn't drink, that didn't smoke, that didn't womanize. I, I put everything. Young ladies, um, that will happen, but, but I want you to ask the Lord yes. to send you someone that already knows him. Knows him. Yes. If, um, just speaking to the young women that um, think from experience, yeah. we can wrongfully look for validation and value in a husband. Right or in someone. Right. And we have to know where our value comes from. Yes. First. 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 Yes. First. Yes. 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 And when you know that our value, that your worth and your value comes from heaven, comes it's a heavenly gift. It comes from Father. When you know that, we don't have when I knew what my purpose on earth was, and my purpose on earth is to display God's glory in my life. When I found that out, I didn't see I didn't seek any more value from my husband because I, I'm already validated mm -hmm. from the most high. Mm -hmm. Now what I seek is when I look at him, I, I see, oh my God, he's, he's the image of Father. So now I'm not seeking for his validation because I'm already validated. What I'm seeking is for us come together as one and display God's full and complete glory yes. on this earth. Yes. yes. Because when you know where your where your validation lies, you'll never be hurt by man again. Yes. 
because you're not seeking approval from man. The approval already has been given from Father. Amen? Amen. 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 So I'm not saying, now with this said, I'm not saying, and I want to make it perfectly clear, perfectly clear. I am not saying at all that you and your husband are not one. You are. You are most definitely one. You are one. But what I am saying is this. Just because you're one doesn't mean, I'm going to repeat myself. Because some of you may not agree with it. That's up to you. You don't have to agree with anything that I say. Anything. You go to the Word. And you study it. And see what the Word says. Okay? Because I'm, I'm giving you what the Holy Spirit shows me. But that's all I can do. You guys, it's, when you go over there to meet Father and He calls you home and, and, and you say, Well, I didn't know that. She didn't touch me that. Hey, that's not going to fly. <laughs> it is not going to fly because He says to what? He says to what about your salvation? Work, Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Okay, so he, he didn't tell me to work it out for you. You guys have to work it out like I'm working my now. So with fear and trembling. But I do want to make this stress this point. If a boyfriend, young ladies, tells you, if you love me, lie with me, that's not love. Mm -hmm. That is not love at all. That's lust. Mm -hmm. That's trying to please the flesh. And when you do that, and you give your precious gift of virginity, away. Virginity is priceless. It is put there for you to give. It's the greatest gift a woman can give a man. The greatest. And that was given by God. And it's supposed to be treasured. Treasured. In the olden days, a woman dressed completely covered. Completely. She was not allowed to touch a man. That's the most that's the greatest gift. If you love anyone, you keep yourself until the one that Father God has given you. Because if that's the, 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 the rib that you belong to, if he's the one you belong to, then you wait. You wait for Father's blessing. You wait for him to unite you. And then you could go and have your fun. And he will have blessings before blessings before blessings on you. Because you honored him. You honored him. Any other way, you're going to suffer. Any other way, you're going to suffer. So ladies, please, do not think that you, that is anything that's worthless that you're carrying. You're carrying a priceless gift. Now for the married women, if your husband tells you, or your boyfriend, older women, tell you, to do something that in your heart you know it's against God's word, don't do it. Mm -hmm. You do not say, well, I have to be obedient to my husband. Not in that sense. Because, what did I say earlier? You're working your own salvation. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are one with your husband. Yes. yes, you are. But when you meet when you meet heaven, when you go to heaven and you meet Father face to face and say, well, my husband told me I was supposed to be submitted, uh, 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 obedient to him. You know what he's say? You're supposed to be obedient to me. Mm -hmm. yes. Because I'm the one that died for you and I'm the one that saves your soul. Your husband doesn't. Mm -hmm. yes. Another little proof if, if, uh, of this is, is that, I, uh, that I use is that if we're one and I will kill somebody, are they going to come and arrest my husband? No. Why not? We're one. Why doesn't he go to jail too? We're one. No. Because each one of you is responsible for your own actions. Because even though you're one with him, you're still individual. Your character and his character are different. Your role and his role are different. If you do work your role out and he works his role out, you'll become together and come together perfectly as one to display God's glory. Amen? Amen. Any questions? So, are you and your husband one? Yes. 
Yes, you are one. I'm not saying you're not. You are one. You are one. But not to the point where you can compromise your salvation. To the point where you compromise your conscience, your soul. That you do not do because it will bring you a lot of sorrow, a lot of pain. Okay, where was I? Okay, now, uh, what, uh, where did I leave off? What was I reading? Okay, yes, uh, 20. So Adam, named, so Adam gave names to the cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast in the field. But for Adam, there was found no helper comparable to him. When Pastor Charlie was teaching that Sunday or preaching that Sunday, I said, oh, there he goes again. He's going to teach my lesson. Because, <laughs> because this is exactly what I was going to. Only he, I liked his better. But Adam, was there was not found. And, and, and when I read this, I said, okay. So the next verse should have been, and he made Adam and Eve, right? But no, it wasn't. It was, and the Lord caused a snow. Uh, let's see. Uh, a deep sleep. No, that's not the one. Because he made the animals. He made the animals. I'm 19. 19, 19, 19. Yes. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called them, each, each living creature, that was its name. Now, what does that say? What that says is God gave Adam the authority to call every animal, to name him. That was his authority. That was... It was given to Adam. It was not given to us. So Adam gave names to all the cattle, the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a comparable helper. And the Lord caused Adam a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. And the rib which the Lord God caused had taken that the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to a man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken from man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they will, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Why were they not ashamed? They were what? Innocent. Awesome. They were innocent. There was no shame because they didn't see, they didn't have any, any, any junk in their mind. They didn't have any malice in their mind. They didn't have any stinking thinking. They didn't have any of that. They were pure. They were innocent. A baby walks around without a diaper running all over the place. He could care less why because he's innocent. He's innocent. Then when he starts growing up. I remember my 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 grandkids. They were so innocent that even when they were in their five years old, whatever they come out stock naked, we'd say, um, "Go in there, go put your clothes on," because we knew. But they didn't. They were still innocent. They were still innocent. So, so now let me tell you something. I'm gonna next slide. Cunning, this is what the word means. Having or showing one's skill in achieving one's ends, in other words, getting what they want. By deceit or evasion, a clever and deceitful way, willingly to deceit, in other words, you plan, you, you, you willingly, you willfully are deceiving. Crafty, uh, wily, wily, now you can read that, I don't know if that's right. Artful. Artful. I mean, they, they, when they deceive, they're very cunning. They're very artful in the way they do things. You will not even tell that it's going to happen. Devious, sly, scheming, calculating, and more. Cunning is a skillful mark by willing, willingness to trick or Why am I giving you this? Because look at what the serpent did. Did. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 15. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. 
And he said to the woman, did he go to Adam? No. no, he went to the woman. Why? Because Adam had the authority. Right. Okay, so he went to the woman. And God said, in, and he, and God said, indeed, said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So what is he using? Is he, is he using the truth? Yes. It's the truth. God said that. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Now there in that translation there, uh, did God tell Adam that if you touch it, you shall die? No. No. So so there, whatever Adam told Eve, he, he must have told her that because she repeated it so that she wouldn't even go near it. So that she wouldn't even go near it because if she went near it and saw it and it was beautiful and she wanted to eat it, you know, so he said, mm, maybe I should tell her that you should need to touch it. No, don't, don't go near it. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die for God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God knowing good and evil. So when the woman said, saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took up its fruit and ate. She also gave her husband with her. Her husband was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both men and women were open and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed big leaves together and made themselves covering. I would like Three people left. I would like one to be Eve, one to be Adam, and one to be the serpent. Who wants to come up? Come on, I need, I need some actors. I need some actresses. Actresses, come on. I need one more. One more. One more. What roles do you want to play? I'll be the serpent. All right. I knew she was going to say, my husband nicknamed her the Taz. Okay. Okay. So you're the serpent. Okay. What do you want to be? Who's Adam? Who's Eve? Mm -hmm. I'll be Adam. Okay. <laughs> and you be Eve. Okay. So, serpent, you tell Eve. You're telling Eve about the, the fruit of the tree. Convince her. Convince her about them. This beautiful tree. Did God really say not to touch it? Go ahead, answer. Go ahead, answer. Uh, God said, if you touch it, you will die. Did he really say that you will die? I think if you eat it, it just means that you're going to know as much as God did. Your eyes are going to be more open, like God. So you're going to be actually kind of just like God. So when Esau that the fruit was good for the eye, and she desired it. She took of the fruit and she ate. And she gave to her husband. And she gave to her husband with her. And he ate. Okay. What do you see here? What do you see? Watch. He didn't stop her. That's right. He didn't protect her. No. He didn't he allowed Satan to talk to her when he was standing there all along. Right? Yes. He didn't protect her. And then what happened? The fall came. Yes. The fall came. I'm going to speed up to now, to now. The feminist movement, the feminist movement is saying we are equal to God. We are equal to man. Forget this, forget this authority business. Forget this submissive business. I'm woman, but I'm strong. That's Satan talking to the woman. Mm -hmm. That's Satan, Satan talking to us women. You don't have to. You don't have to submit to your husband. You don't have to. You're equal to him. You can go to work. Let him stay and take care of the kids once in a while. And then it happens, and before you know it, she's working and he's babysitting. You have him nurtured. I'll go make the money. I'll make more money than you. You know what I'm saying? So the feminist movement is, is the enemy is still using the same vessel 
woman, he's still using the same vessel to demasculate a man. Take the authority away from the man. Because that's what happened in the beginning, and that's what's happening right now. The woman is taking the authority of the man. Now, every show you see, who's in charge? Women. Any cop show you see, who's in charge? Women. Movies that you see now, women are president. The government today, this day and age, more women are involved in government than ever before. Women are taking over. Now, women want their sex. I don't mean sex, I mean their sex, their gender. Equal. Now women are saying, hey, I go wear pants, I could shave my head, and then they begin to look like women. The men, they walk like men. I'm, you know, I don't want to be called woman, I want to be called man. And the man is... <laughs> Adam doing? What is man doing? It's nothing. Man is doing absolutely nothing. <coughs> man is fearing women more and more. They're afraid. They're afraid of women. Men were supposed to have the authority, ladies. Man was supposed to take care of women. Adam didn't do it at the garden, and man without God is not doing it either. Or it seems like in this scenario, Adam gave authority to Satan. Well, when he lit, when he bit of the apple, it was pledged to him. Yes. That's what happened. When he gave up, when he ate of the apple, the, the apple, then he pledged his allegiance to the enemy. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. So yes. And at the same time, what I gather is he was starting to doubt because Satan was already enticing her. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like he was being enticed. Because what, ha what was happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just standing there listening. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So men, what are men doing? Just standing there listening to the women? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, they deserve equal rights. Well, yeah, they deserve... No, they don't. Their roles are made different. They are built... Made. We are built different. We are made different. Mm -hmm. We are different than men. I don't want to have authority over my husband. Uh-uh. I don't want, he's stronger than me. I want him to take care of me. I want him to provide for me. That's his role. His self-sacrifice for me. When I'm sick, he's been bringing me medicine. He's, he takes good care of me. I am blessed beyond blessed. But that's his role. But again, I play my role too. I make him lunch for, the, for his work, I cleaned the house, I raised his children. I also went to work when things got tight a little bit, but I still did my duties at home. He never asked me to go work, we always fought. We always fought because I wanted to go work. But I, but I still kept the house and the children. I got a job where I could go to work and be, before the kids went to school and, and come be home when the kids got home. So it was okay. But I, women are stripping mm -hmm. the masculinity of men, and men are allowing it to happen. Where are our godly men to stand up and say, woman, let's, let's be one. Let's be one. Let me love you. Let me protect you. Let me sacrifice myself for you. Let me do that. And woman, I'll take care of you. I will help you. I will advise you. When I see that something's going wrong, I will consult you. I will, I will be your helpmate. And together, we are displaying God's glory. Because that's the way men and women should be. We are built different. Man cannot nurture a, being, a living being in them. We can. They cannot. That wasn't the role. No, notice the God-given role. When the kids were little and they were fighting, you said, stop it. 
And when the father said, stop it, <laughs> totally different. Why? Because that's a God-given role. Yeah. God-given. You know, we, uh, Cindy sent a link to... Um, uh, uh, Go ahead. Thank, Thank you. Good job. Good job. Good job. In, in verse 5, where he says, where the serpent says, um, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Yes. The speaker was saying, they forgot they were already like, like God. God. They were made in the image. Yes. And when we forget who we are, right. then that's when everything gets. Exactly. Started. And the thing is that the enemy, Satan, is still out there. He is alive and he is well. And he's still trying to do what he's been wanting to do from day one since he was cast out from heaven. He is trying to bring the fall of man. Man, female, and male. Mm -hmm. He's trying to bring the fall. And he's doing it. And he is succeeding. How was it in the day of Noah? How was it when, when um, uh, the flood came? What were, men, what were they doing? What were they doing? Uh, and then what? Drinking. drinking, marrying one another, whatever. But why in, in Sodom and Gomorrah? What were they doing? Nothing but lesbians and and and, and homosexuality. That's all there was. What are we doing now? We're trying the the. This is trying to change that the male will become women and the women will become male, and it's growing so fast and it's growing so rapidly before our eyes, and it's being pushed to us that we have to abide by what they want, and we cannot allow that because when we allow that, when we godly people allow that then we're in for a big one. Because if we're disobeying God, is he gonna stand by us? No. So, with that said, do you understand what's happening here? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna be alert with that. With, with that. And um, with that said, we're only probably going to just become in the beginning of, 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 the, of the book. But that's okay. Did you understand? Yes. Did you learn a little bit? Yes. Okay, okay. Snips and snails. There's a, let's go back to the book. I just, wanted you to, I just wanted to lay a foundation so I can build on. Snips and snails. Everybody there? There's an old Mother Goose nursery rhyme dating back to the early 19th century that talks about the difference between boys and girls. What are little boys made of? Snips and snails and puppy duck, puppy duck tails. What are little, little boys made of? What are little girls made of? Sugar and spice and all things nice. That's what little girls are made of. The poem was written in an era that assigned gentle, tra uh, gentle traits to girls and rough and tumble behaviors to boys. In an era that had clear ideas about the differing strength roles and responsibilities of men and women. And you still get that with a child. You get a little boy and a little, when I, when Warren was in kindergarten, I went and I worked in class with him. And I would see, when at recess time, I would see the little kids get the blocks and get the kickball and kick it and, you know, they were rough and they were doing this and then they were playing with the little cars and smashing the cars. And then I would look at the little girl and the little girl was, Real nice, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, so that was built in. It was built in. Dissatisfied with these kinds of uh, stereotypes, the feminist movement sought to sought to redefine womanhood. It worked to minimize distinction distinctions and uh, overcome roles differences between the sexes. It promoted the idea that women were powerful, strong, and invisible women didn't need men. They didn't want to be set to be stifled by tradi traditional definitions of womanhood, especially not by the roles of wife and mom. Feminists suggested that men didn't possess any qualities that were different or unique. In fact, when compared to the females, the male was actually inferior. Everything guys can do, girls can do better. Huh? 
Oh yeah, uh huh. The arm is not. What other one? Uh huh. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, no, no. That's okay. That's okay. You, you got it. Okay, now they claim that women would not be equal to men until they fill the same roles and positions as men. Equality, they insisted, means roles, interge means roles interchange interchangeability. If, if male and female roles are different, then they aren't really equal. And what, what's happening here is because they don't understand they don't understand that we're here not but only to display God's glory. They don't understand the how different we are made by God because they don't know God. Modern culture has accepted the feminist idea that differences between male and female are inconsequential, which means they're not important or significant to the roles we assume. In contrast to the Mother Goose era, we now view roles as interchangeable. It doesn't matter who wears the pants. A mom can be as good as a dad and a dad, as a dad, and a dad can be as good as a mom. We also view male, female roles as, as um, ma malleable, which means, um, yeah, they, they're pliable. That you change, it could, it could change. We get to we get to shape and define the roles. We get to shape and define what the roles are. Isn't that something? We don't get to do that, ladies. God did that for us. Culture wants us to think that all definitions of gender, sexual relationships, marriage, motherhood, fatherhood, and family are equally valid. Many people today view male-female distinctions as utterly irrelevant and disp and dispensable. As newly married, the first-time mother, reality TV star Bethany Frankel told People magazine in an up-close video interview, Jackson's an, incredi Jackson's an incredible father. He is nurturing. He changes 95% of the diapers. There is no woman man in this relationship, except the fact that, crudeness alert, um, that I have the boobs and they come and the baby comes out of me. How ridiculous is that? How ridiculous is that? That there is no difference except that the baby comes out of her and she's the one who has the boobs. If she can't see the difference, she is completely in darkness. The enemy has them completely. They are completely in darkness. The enemy has a good grip on this. A good grip on this. In the modern feminist uh, worldview, we get to decide what girls are made of. We can decide for ourselves that our womanhood means and what role we want to assume. So much for Mother Goose. If we want, we can drop the sugar and add some snips and snails to our spice. Though the, for, though the formula of snips and snails and tails for boys and sugar and spice for girls can be uh, shrugged off as childish, the question posed by this nursery rhyme are valid. What are little boys made of? What are little girls made of? Is there a difference? And if there is, what implication do, does that have for our lives? It has a lot of implication. Oh, I thought you were raising your hand. No. This week we're going to address the first question. What are little boys made of? We're going to take a close look at Genesis and examine God's creation of man. We'll learn about how God, how God wired man and what makes him tick. Next week, for, the, for much of the rest of the study, we are going to focus on women. But in order to grasp what God had in mind for us girls, it's important that we first understand what, ha what he had in mind for the guys. Both aren't made of, of snips and snails and puppy dog tails. Both, as you'll soon see, they were created with a unique purpose and design. And we're going to do that next week.
Okay, I just wanted to do the intro, lay the foundation today, and next week we're going to start working on man and how is he man, why is he man, how is he made, what are his traits. And then when we understand that, we'll have a better understanding of who we are. Amen? Amen. 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 Did you learn? Yes. yes. Today we're going to have a special, uh, oh, okay, uh, uh, Crystal has um, something that she wants to uh, share with us. That, oh, it's 8 o'clock. Yeah. No, do we record what she's doing? I can't hear you. Do you want me to no? record? Do you need to record her? Oh, no, you don't have to record that. Tell me when you hear it. 